In this session of the Purple Coffee Podcast, I speak to Caesar Abid about taking life seriously and finding your true calling. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello there and welcome to session 22 of the Purple Coffee Podcast, inspiring stories from creative entrepreneurs. I am your host, Turndog, and on this occasion I'm delighted to interview Caesar Abid about finding your true calling in life when beforehand you maybe took it for granted. As you may have guessed, those regular viewers and listeners, this all is all in aid of my book, The Successful Mistake, which is a book about an entrepreneur's grand faux pas and how they switch and rude it around. I've, as of re recording this, I'm now writing the book, so the light is at the end of the tunnel and I'm ever so excited to share the journey with you. So I'm going to put a link to the book on bit.ly forward slash purple coffee 22. There you'll be able to find all the information for Caesar and this podcast, as well as signing up to the Successful Mistake journey. I encourage you to get involved. It's an open and transparent one, and I hope to do something that most authors do not. And so, what about my main man, Caesar, and his great mistake? Well, Caesar, once upon a time, just took life for granted. He enjoyed sleeping in, he enjoyed just getting through his day, but something really big happened in his life which forced him to, you know, take a new viewpoint. He ended up taking a course on project management, and while doing so, he fell in love with that world. But not just the job at hand, the entire basis of controlling your life and bringing a bit of structure and schedule into it, something he'd struggled for for years. As such, he turned to podcasting and blogging and a whole online world. So not now is he only a project manager, but a guy project managers come to for advice. So I'm really happy to share Caesar's story with you. And at the time of this podcast going out, he's running his first ever Kickstarter campaign. He's got a really cool book idea. So I'll be putting the links on to the um, page. Again, bit.ly forward slash purple coffee 22. Be sure to check it out and support him where you can. So I'm going to now stop ch chattering away and get to that big juicy mistake of Caesar's. But before I do, you may not know a great deal about him. So I've created a little story that a storyteller like myself can. And I've um, put a few notes on my trusty iPhone. So I'm going to read my tale of Caesar a bead. And yeah, afterwards you will, it'll feel like he's your brother, maybe. I'm sure you've met one or two project managers in your lifetime. I'm sure as hell certain they ain't like Caesar. He's a little like Clark Kent and Superman. On the one hand, he shows up each day at work as a project manager and whatnot. Yet, in the evenings, he rips off his shirts and showcases his cape and guides a world of other project managers looking for help and guidance to grow. He does it through PM for the masses, and although he may not be as fast as old Superman, he can see through walls. If the wall we're talking about is the figurative one standing between project managers and success. So, with that, here's Caesar and me chatting away. Enjoy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. I'm delighted to be having Caesar Abade on the show today. Caesar is a project manager and entrepreneur and also the podcast host of PM for the Masses, which has been going for, I believe, three and a bit years now. And it's built a very steady following for people who are interested in project management. And obviously that covers a whole array of industries and ideas. So first of all, Caesar, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. We're going to be talking to Caesar about his great mistake, which is an aid of my book, The Success Mistake, all about an entrepreneur, great faux pas, and how they turned it around. So young and thriving entrepreneurs like your good self can learn from them and embrace mistakes like you should. 
But before we do that and we get into the nitty gritty, I'm just going to pass it over to you, Caesar. Um, so please, just explain a little bit about your world, who you are, and what it is that you do. <laughs> sure. You know, uh, Matthew, I'm a kid from Brazil, so I'm a I'm an immigrant. I grew up um, there. So I went all through high school and first year university in Brazil. And I guess my story could be um, up until recently could be summarized as as you know a kid who was pretty smart but could never do anything or get anything done. Um, I remember even up to my mid twenties, just sitting and watching TV till two, three in the morning and then going to bed and waking up late and just going through the motions, you know, um, doing well in school and things like that. But I could, I couldn't really, didn't feel motivated, didn't, didn't really do anything with, with my brain. You know? So in Brazil, I got an electronics degree and, um, and I moved to the U.S. in 97. Um, I lived there for about four years. I went there with my family. My dad was a um, a university professor in Brazil, and he, he went to, to Chicago to get a PhD, and I decided to tag along and learn English and experience a, 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 new, a new country, a new culture. And after four years in, in, in the U.S., um, we moved to Canada, and I went through university here, got a, got a degree in electrical engineering. And uh, around that time, just a, it's a long story, but the short version of it is around that time, my, my dad had started a business a um, couple of years prior. And at that point, when I was graduating from university, he was ready to offer me a job with the, with his um, startup. And I, I thought long and hard about this because, as you can imagine, there is um, there are uh, pros and cons with uh, working with family. And uh, but I ended, I ended up taking the job. And I was still in that mindset of just going through the motions, going through life. And, um, and it was time to get some business cards for, for myself. This was a small company. I was going to be wearing a lot of hats, but um, I needed a title for my business card. And my dad said, you know, I think um, a good title for you here would be project manager. And I was like, all right, that sounds cool. I have no idea what this means, but uh, that sounds, you know, fresh out of university. I'm a project manager. It sounded like something I wanted to be. <laughs> I wanted to be. So I got my business cards with the project manager on it. And uh, and again, just going through the motions, I was I treated as uh, treated that as a job, even though it was a family business. I would just show up at nine, leave at five. Um, I left everything, all decisions. I didn't care about them; just left them up to my dad and his partners, and and yeah, just going through life like that. And and then in two thousand seven um, and two thousand nine, my dad had cancer and a stroke. And by then I'd been working there for a few years and I was like, oh my goodness, um, what if this company doesn't survive this, this uh, tragedy? You know, he, he, he survived, but um, I, for a long time there, I thought he was not going to be able to work again. The company was not going to continue. And, and I decided to look at my career. So okay, am I employable? You know, I've been working in the family business from my entire professional career. And I realized that uh, as a project manager, I could get a certification as a project manager and maybe be more employable just in case. So I started studying for this certification and um, just with the, with the intent of getting it and then maybe what in the future maybe be more employable. But what I didn't under realize is that as I was learning about project management, I was learning about organization. I was learning about breaking down complexity, getting things done, and also... I, I started to see, okay, I can actually apply some of these things to my work and to my life. And, and that really made a difference for me. I started being more productive. I started finally, you know, putting my good brain to use. And also I started getting the entrepreneurial bug. You know, I started taking more responsibility in the company because my dad was sick. And it was a combination of having systems in place to help my brain, you know, get organized and get things done. And the, the situation that kind of forced me, pushed me into being an entrepreneur, that really started to change my life. I started blogging, I started podcasting, and now I'm a certified project management professional. I have a much bigger role in the company. Um, I have two popular podcasts, uh, the, the Project Management for the Masses podcast and the Construction Industry podcast, which I've been doing since 2011. I have a, a little bit of a speaking career as well, uh, and, and I'm writing a book. So... 
that's in short. I don't know if that's short, but <laughs> that's that's my story um, so far. I love it, and that's fantastic to think that you know you just could, took that course just because you felt like oh like, I'll be a bit more employable, but it kind of reinvigorated all your senses and you got excited about all these possibilities. And I think for something like project management, if you can really delve into it. It does help both your personal and professional life because it's all sounds about organization and putting process in place to get the most potential out of yourself. So it's a fantastic story to see you go down. It's excellent indeed. And these days you obviously help other people. Um, I, I suppose battle the, the project manager world. Yes. Yeah. And uh, um the, and that's one of my passions that that's what started me with this podcast is um, I saw the difference that it made in my life to to just be better at understanding complexity and and and, and doing something that makes a difference and, and delivering something you know, which I could never do before. Um, and uh, so I have I have a passion for that to kind of help people see that, you know, you know, that idea you have in your mind for a product or a service or a book. Here's a step by step um, you know, a recipe that you can use to take that idea and turn into something tangible. Uh, and, and that's really powerful. That's, that's what makes a difference, um, in my opinion, for successful people is that they actually have deliverables, you know, they, they have something to offer, uh, something other than just an idea. No, I agree with that. It is, it's one thing having an idea, but it's another having a plan in place to actually make it reality. Right. Yes. Well, I'm going to pass it back over to you and let you um, carry on the story and just tell us about this great mistake of yours. So please delve us back in time. Tell us how it went down and what you learned from it and the journey it's taken you on since. And we'll, we'll take it from there. <laughs> My goodness, there's so many mistakes I made. and I still make them. And um, and I was thinking hard about this, Matthew. And uh, I don't know that I can pin, pinpoint an exact this one, you know, slip or this one mistake that, that I made, that was the biggest. I think it was, um, my biggest mistake was that I never took life, uh, in, in my, my future seriously, you know, up until recently. <laughs> I think that was my biggest mistake. Uh, I never understood that I had shortcomings. Uh, looking back now, I, I'm pretty sure that I could be if I pursued this, I could be diagnosed with uh, attention deficit disorder, one of those things, because I, my my attention span is is not good. My memory is is concerning. It's how bad it is. I, you know, things that happened with my my kids. You know, I'm to be talking to my wife, and and she's like, you know, remember when Laura was two, and and she did that. I, I have no idea. I don't remember. I might. So my, I have shortcomings, and I think one of my biggest mistakes was not embracing that and not accepting that um, my brain and my uh, my smarts, they were really good for some things, for dreaming, for having ideas, for, uh, you know, for, for creating, but it was really bad for, you know, organization, bring, understanding complexity, focusing, and remembering. So, I think that was my biggest mistake was that I just took it all for granted. Okay, well, I'm, I'm smart. I'll make it somehow, you know, and, um, and not understanding that, you know, as the tagline of my podcast says, life is a project and we are the managers. Yeah. So another example, you know, I always had faith, you know, I, I, I'm a person of faith and I think I relied on it too much, you know. So my attitude was like, God will provide, let's watch some TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my mistake here was that never understanding that we are in charge of where we end up in life. And, and instead of, of whining and complaining and, and protesting, which a lot of people like to do these days, um, we should try to be better and it'd be more valuable in the marketplace. You know, um, a person who is good at dreaming and having ideas has no value in the marketplace. You know, ideas are cheap. Everybody has ideas. Everybody dreams. But, you know, um, I needed to... And, and it wasn't until my dad's stroke that I realized that I had it in me to be an entrepreneur and a go-getter. You know? and, and, and plus, learning how to organize my projects using what I learned from project management, uh, it, that was a perfect recipe for me to start putting my brains to good use 
and be where I'm at today. And I, and I've never been more optimistic and excited about about my future as I am today. So I guess my my biggest mistake was not understanding exactly who I was and not taking my 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 destiny and, and my life seriously enough. Right. What would the wine sign to you? Because you talked about when you were younger, going to bed late, waking up late, um, not having so much focus, you know, just treating a job like a nine to five, even though it was a family business. What other warning signs were there for this kind of, I suppose, lethargic outlook? Uh, the warning signs for that, um, I think one thing that, uh, that happened to me uh, that kind of woke me up is I... I used to date a girl that I thought I was going to marry, ended up not marrying her, but we did it for a long time and uh, we shared a lot of things in common. And um, one of the things that we shared in common was uh, we thought the important things in life were not, was not money, which is true. I still believe that. Um, and, um, and I remember sharing with her that, you know, about my career, I really don't care much about that. I think eventually things are going to, you know, if I keep going and being a good person and things will work themselves out. And, and she looked at me, this, this girl who was really, um, you know, uh, thinking about the right things in life. And, uh, she looked at me in the eye and said, well, you better get started thinking about that career of yours, you know? And that was really shocking to me to hear that from her. Mm. And, um, I was like, man, uh, like, okay, maybe I should look into that, you know? So the fact that, that people were telling me that I needed a change. That to me was the biggest warning sign. And, um, and it wasn't until change happened to me that, that, uh, that I actually embodied that and decided to take action. Mm, so I think it's so important for, for a new entrepreneur in particular to get the balance between passion and purpose right. Um, to take a term from a guy called Dave Connery, who I interviewed relatively recently, he talked about, you know, you need to have a balance of having a passion and a purpose, because if you've only got one, it's going to be hard for you to do it in the long run. But if you've got both, then you've got something set in stone for you to drive towards. Right. And if you have got a purpose, but you don't have any passion, then after a while, I feel an entrepreneur can slip into a bit of a spiral where they are going to bed a bit later, they're not looking after themselves as well they're they're sleeping in late they're not as healthy and you can only do that to yourself for a certain amount of time before you just burn out and you hit the wall and you just don't really know what you're doing all this for mm -hmm. whereas yeah if i whereas if you've got nothing but passion you haven't got a purpose it kind of comes back to what you were saying the ideas are cheap you'll forever keep coming up with ideas but you won't have any tangible way to turn them into reality yeah yeah, um, you know, you can have a passion to, to make money, and but that says nothing about your purpose. You know, what are you here for? Um, I, I really believe that we are all unique, and science will back me up here. You know, uh, DNA evidence is, is pretty, uh, <laughs> yeah. agrees with me that we are unique. We, we, nobody can do what we do the way that we do it. And, um, and I, I really believe that as such, we have a unique purpose. And, 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 and uh, once you find that purpose, I think chances are <laughs> you'll see that, okay, this is the perfect fit for me for a business or for a job even. And the passion sometimes will come, you know, just by finding that purpose because man, I can do this. The world needs me to do this and, and only I can do it. So if that doesn't get you all fired up, I don't know what does. Mm, no, very true. Very true. And I, and I do, I think it's it's something that a lot of entrepreneurs will go through, whether it's the a bit pie in the sky and they just come up with ideas time and time again and don't get anything done. Or after a while, they slip into a bit of a you know, lethargic state and they just go through the motions and both are as dangerous as the other. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I was there too. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and that's why, um, you know, studying and, or reading from, uh, you know, books and things like that, they kind of... And also project management has taught me that uh, you can only do one thing at a time. And so, but if you organize yourself and, and you have a system in place, you, then all of a sudden you know what the one thing you need to be doing right now, today, to be achieving that larger goal in, in six months, for example. You know? And that to me just brings such clarity to, for example, Matthew, we talked about before, before we started recording here, we talked about the fact that I'm working on writing a book. I'm going to use a Kickstarter 
um, campaign to, to help me fund it. And uh, that whole thing is just so overwhelming. There's so many moving parts. And, uh, and that's even before I start writing the book. You know? mm. um, but using, this, uh, using project management, I'm able to, to look at that project that is so complex and not be intimidated by it because I, can, I have a system to break it down and sequence the, the, the things that I need to do. So when I wake up in the morning, I look at my, I look at my plan. I say, you know what? Today, I need to be doing this one simple thing. And I can just focus on that one thing. When that one thing is done, I can do, go move on to the next one. So I'm never, quote unquote, writing a book. You know, I am doing simple things in sequence that together, you know, uh, at the end of them, I will have a book published and, and, and successful, uh, successfully sold. So, um, yeah. So going back to the course that you took, the qualification, was it this was the turning point for you ultimately? Was there anything else that kind of made, brought all this together where it's like, wow, I really do like project management. I love what this is doing. And was it also that that led you to start blogging and starting the podcast and trying to help other people achieve this too? Yeah. Um, the fir- uh, be honest, the first, the first podcast um, was the construction industry podcast. And I did that as um, I, I'm still doing that. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing it. It's uh, it's basically our company podcast. It's not my podcast, you know. Mm. So, um, but when I started studying for the for the certification, I started learning about these uh, techniques, and um, and I said, well, that's that's great. I can apply this to work. And then I started consuming a lot of material, uh, a lot of content around that topic and I came across David Allen's Getting Things Done. I'm sure you've heard of it. Mm-hmm. Um, read that book in a couple of days. It was just like, it was like he was writing that book for me, you know? <laughs> and uh, so much so that years later when I launched the podcast, I, I invited him to be a guest on, on the show and he, he accepted and I had a delightful conversation with him. Um, and it was probably the highlight of, of my career so far, <laughs> such, <laughs> getting on the phone with David Allen. That was um, fantastic. So um, once I, and I think that's when I found passion and, and purpose, as you, as you put it, was when I, I finally saw how, I, how my, my capacity to, 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 to think of things and, and dream and have ideas you know, you know, Matthew. I went through engineering school. That's pretty hard. So I can say without, um, uh, you know, without uh, being conceited, I guess that I'm smart. You know, I have I have the capacity to do things, but I could never do anything until I started organizing myself, and that's what kind of gave me the passion to start the project management for the masses podcast, and start with the website and start helping people. And, and that's another thing that happens when you start doing that and giving and, and giving value to people without asking for anything in return. Mm-hmm. You actually get something in return because people start reaching out to you and thanking you and, and, and sharing uh, with you um, all the difference you're making in their lives. And I'll give you an example. I got an email. Uh, the tagline for my show is, um, as I said, project management for the masses. Life is a project. You are the manager. And I always say that um, your career matters more than your job, you know? Um, and, uh, I got uh, an email from a listener. I'm not sure where he is from. His name is Jose. So I'm assuming he is from Latin America somewhere, but, um, he sent me a picture. He, uh, he wrote on his wall, um, uh, on his kitchen wall, he wrote with chalk, you know, life is a project. I'm the manager. My career is matter- matters more than, than my job, you know? And to see that picture, you know, it's obviously a, a um, you know, and he's hiding that behind a curtain. You know, he can, he can, he's pulling back the curtain and it, it, it's right behind the curtain on the wall. To have that kind of, in, of an impact on someone I don't even know, but that have that message that has helped me resonate with other people. That could be seen as a, as a, as a, a payoff, you know, even though there's, you never send me any money, you know, yeah. uh, so there you find your purpose and, and, your, and, and that fuels your passion to keep going. Absolutely. It's those intangibles sometimes which are the most important thing of all. And I love what you um, put on then. It wasn't until you started able to you know, take control of the organization in your life when things mm-hmm. come together. 
And I think this is something just about every single entrepreneur, no matter what kind they are, can sympathize with. Because whether we're starting out on our own as a solopreneur or starting a new business and it's online, offline, within a few weeks, your schedule just starts to consume you. You ultimately take on too much. And it's something that I continue to suffer with now because you need to find a balance between you know working on things you're passionate about, working on things that will bring in money, um, you know, leveraging yourself. And if you, once you're able to actually find a process that helps you get from A to B and stay on top of your day, then things can just start to happen. But mm -hmm. until you get hold of that, it, it feels like every day is a bit of a struggle because it's like, I know I've got the ability to do this. I know I'm smart enough to do it, but I don't have enough hours in the day or I don't have enough energy or I don't have enough attention. There's always kind of something holding mm -hmm. you back. Yep, I, I agree. And um, and one thing that has helped me is uh, uh, the ability to say no to, to opportunities. Because mm. that's so hard, huh? especially when you're starting out and yeah. and uh, you see everything as an opportunity. And But one thing that has helped me, and I've, I've been doing this for two years now, um, at the beginning of the year, and, and I revise that um, one or twice, once or twice during the year, I will have my, my top level, my high level goals for that year instead of resolutions, you know, my goals. Okay, this year I want to do this, that, and the other. And it needs to be things that are measurable, things that I can look back and, and check it off as done. You know, So losing weight is uh, too vague, you know, for example. Yeah. Uh, you need to be specific. Uh, you know, a smart goal, as I'm sure, I'm sure you've heard. Uh, with a specific, measurable, attainable, um, uh, what's the R? I forget. Real, and t realistic. realistic and time-bound, right? Um and then, uh, and that having that, and I looked at every day, you know, I have it on my, um, OmniFocus, uh, application that reminds me of them every, I look at them every day. Um, so when I'm considering a project to take on, I, I say, okay, do, does this project align with these goals? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, even if it's a good thing, I need to, for, before I take on that project, I need to tell myself, okay, I need to change my goals. Am I willing to change my goals to take on this project? If the answer is no. Then, um, then it's no, and and it kind of it's liberating to be able to, with confidence, turn down an opportunity. And but you have to, you you just have to, especially when you start podcasting and, and blogging and being out there, people start reaching out to you and offering you this and that opportunity, and and it, and it's all great, you know. At the very least, you get exposure and you you get you know you you network, you connect with people, but um, but when you when you know what your goals are even if it's short term, like a year, you know, uh, then it helps you choose the projects and it helps you uh, even better than that. It helps you which projects to say no to. So and, and limiting your work in progress is is the best thing that I've done um, for my my own sanity. You know? So right now, for example, I mentioned I'm working on this book and that's all I'm focusing on. You know, everything else is on cruise control, you know making minimum payments on everything yeah. <laughs> and just attacking this one debt to myself with a vengeance, you know, just leaning in and, um, and that's what I'm focusing on. So it's easy. So for example, I, if I get an opportunity, if I get invited to, I get invited to, to, to be interviewed, you know, like, like this, this opportunity right now and right now it's a great time to do that because, uh, Hey, guess what? They're going to be publishing that interview around the time when, my book is going to be on Kickstarter, right? So, so those things align with my current goal. So, yeah, let's do it. You know, no brainer. But, um, but again, there's so many other things that I need to say no to because of, of the, the clarity in vision. Now, now don't get me wrong. I'm, it's, it's not perfect, you know, uh, uh, and I do feel overwhelmed more often than I'd like to. But having that um, knowledge of where you're going um, and what goals you have helps you choose what projects and to take and it helps you choose what to, what to say no to no i really like that and i like how you set those goals and you've still got the flexibility where you can you know change the goals but you ask yourself am i going to take on this new project this new opportunity but am i willing to change my goals for it because that's a big deal i mean if it's a really great opportunity then you know you're willing to change your goals fantastic but it kind of sets a bit of a standard. It needs to be a fantastic opportunity for you to do it. Otherwise, you know, you will say no and walk away from it. So I like that approach. A great 
deal. Well, I think it's been an amazing insight. I, I love how you've gone from being this person who just seemed to go through life, was just like happy to have a job and just do what needed to be done to get by, to being this person who has such defined goals and, you know, has control over his day, which, like I say, as an entrepreneur, I think is one of the most difficult things to tackle and hiring a personal assistant isn't going to solve it. It's this mindset of, you need to prioritize, you need to get a handle of what you do and don't want to do. And it's so difficult and it does take time. So I think you've got a fantastic approach these days and it seems to be working. Yeah, thank you. So before we finish up, I, I just want you to share one nugget of wisdom with, and I'm thinking the person out there who is just maybe started as an entrepreneur and and their life is getting a little bit crazy they've taken on maybe a little bit more than they can chew and they need to sort of prioritize and take a step back and just take control of their day if you just had one tip for them to help you know hack their schedule what would it be oh to hack this their schedule <laughs> um okay um we've all been okay i that's uh i had something else to share here but i think this is a better question uh, well, for, for, feel for free what I... to share the other one afterwards <laughs> as well. <laughs> all right, um, all right. So, so here is my my answer to that. Um, we've all been overwhelmed by a project or by something we needed to do. And um, Matthew, have you ever sat down and said, "My goodness, this is this is a lot. Let me sit down and make a list." Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sure you've you've been in that place. <laughs> we've all we all have been in that place. And the thing that we tend to do is we try to we tend to write a list of tasks. This is what we need to do. These are the, the actions we need to take uh, to accomplish that. And my advice, my tidbit, and this comes straight from project management. What you're trying to do, what your brain is trying to get you to do is to break down that project into manageable chunks, which is a good thing. You need to do that. But the way we do, we go at it wrong is that we try to take something that is a noun, a project is a noun, something that you're going to hold in your hands or deliver. It's a deliverable. We, we, uh, we can only break a noun into other nouns. Okay. <laughs> you can't take a number and break it into letters. Right. So, so you, when you break down a project and you, instead of creating a list, just break it down into sub deliverables, if you will. So for example, if you are planning on writing a book and that's your project, a book is certainly a deliverable. It's a noun. It's something you're going to hand off to someone and going to sell it. So when you feel overwhelmed by the project of the book, instead of sitting down and writing a list of tasks, for example, write chapter one, write chapter two, um, you know, create marketing plan. Those are all tasks. Those are all things. Those are all verbs, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're not really breaking it down. You're just boxing yourself into a way of of doing this right so instead of doing that just break it down into nouns so a book will have you're gonna have to to have it edited you're gonna have to have it uh you're gonna have to have a cover design you're gonna have to have interior design isbn number uh you're gonna have to have it printed right so for for example um editing that is a deliverable that is something that needs to be done and the and you're not telling yourself how you're going to edit it. You're just going to tell yourself that you need to have it completed. The, the advantage of that is that if you are all of a sudden you decide, and Ben, this project is a lot. There's a lot of deliverables. It's a lot for me to do. You can actually um, bring in an assistant and say, you know what? I'm going to give you this one deliverable, editing. And you figure out you're the expert in editing. You're an editor. You decide how you're going to do it and what the actions are supposed to be here. You know, it's on my place to tell you. So when you break your project down into deliverables instead of actions, you, it makes it easy for you to number one, delegate. Number two, you can see which deliverables need to come first. So you can sequence those deliverables. So you know what you need to be working on first and then second and then third. Also, it makes it easier for you to estimate how much the whole thing is going to cost you, not only in terms of money, but also in terms of time. Because when you talk to the editor, the editor will tell you, oh, by the way, that's going to cost you $1,000 and it's going to take me two weeks to do. Guess what? You can, you can have that estimate for every single one of those sub-deliverables. And then you can add it all up and see, okay, this project is going to cost me this much money and it's going to take me this long. And then you can make decisions. Okay, well, I 
can't wait that long. So I need to, I need to find a way to do this uh, differently, or I don't have that much money. I need to do it in a different way. So it just adds clarity when you break down your project into, into nouns, into deliverables instead of actions. Does that help? Oh, absolutely. That is such an interesting approach. And it is. It's, it's one of those things. I think everyone has like a to-do list and we just kind of say, like you say, write chapter one, write chapter two, you know, do cover design and stuff. But kind of creating these sub little worlds like editing, design, marketing, it allows you to, you know, maybe create sub tasks at a later date, but it just, yeah, it makes it a bit more manageable. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true <laughs> that's it and uh, that's how companies uh, like apple amazon google that's how they do it that's yeah. how apple does the iphone you know imagine how complex that mm. is uh, yeah. compared to writing a book that's you know writing a book is uh, child's play right? <laughs> and yet yet look uh, you know think of tim cook he will in about a week he's going to stand up on the stage there and he's going to make a promise to all of us that He's going to hold this device in his hand and he said, this is going to cost you this much and you'll be able to buy it on this day at this time. And that, that's mind-blowing mind that he can do that with confidence, you know, Absolutely. But because they, they, they are project managers. That, you know, what keeps them up at night is not that, it's actually being innovative and, and beating the competition. They have yeah. no problems uh, delivering on that promise, you know. Great. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure season um, you said you had one other bit of nugget so do you want to share that with us real quick before we wrap things up sure yeah uh here it is and this is something i've been watching especially in the, the solopreneur uh world there's it seems like it's exploding right now everybody's an entrepreneur and we've all heard that we need to provide something that the market wants right yeah. we need to go out there find out what they want and give it to them that's true but if you really want to make a difference in the world i think and it takes me back to finding your purpose, right? You need to think beyond that. Um, Henry Ford said, and I'm sure you've heard this, that if if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Yeah. Right? So sure, you can make a lot of money developing a faster horse. He could have done that. But he had a vision that went beyond that, beyond what the market wanted. So instead of the two extremes of either developing a product or service that you have a passion for, but have not tested the market for acceptability, or on the other hand of the spectrum, you know, just giving the market solely what they want. Um, my advice is try to understand the underlying desire, pain, or need of your customer segment, and then see how you can fulfill those in a way that is unique, innovative, and that delights. Yeah. So uh, Ford understood that sure people wanted faster horses, but really the underlying human desire, pain, and need there was for better, better transportation. Yeah. So faster horses would have fulfilled that. But I think Ford Mustangs are better. Yes, I must say. I would rather be um, driving down the road in a Mustang than hobbling along on a horse. That's just me, though. <laughs> no, yeah, I, no. think that's, I think that is very good advice. And I think it's sometimes um, hard to get your head around as an entrepreneur because you have all these ideas coming at you. And it's like, is this going to serve a need? And sometimes that need doesn't exist in its most obvious state in the here and now because your idea is innovative and it doesn't exist, or at least it doesn't exist in its current form. So you have to think outside the box and will it actually fulfill an emotion, a feeling, a, you know, an, un an unknowing need, I suppose. So. Right. Very good. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, Caesar. Thank you so much for jumping on and sharing your amazing thoughts. It's been a pleasure. I've loved listening to your journey. It's great um, to see you come from A to B. So thank you so much. No, thank you, Matthew. I look forward to your book. Oh, I, I look forward to yours. Cheers. And there you go, folks. Another session of the Purple Coffee Podcast at an end and a big Thanks to you for watching and listening and a big thanks to Caesar for being part of both the Success for Mistake and this very podcast. And my, oh my, what a fantastic insight he offers. I love it. I think we've all been there. Maybe it was when we were younger at college or university or school or at our first jobs. Maybe it has come into later in life for you. I know that to an extent I still struggle with this. It's hard sometimes. You allow life to get the best of you and it becomes a little lethargic and tedious. Well, it's okay because you can turn it around. And where it took a big, horrible life changing moment for Caesar to reach out and do that course, for you, it could be something as simple as watching this podcast and going, you know what? I can make a change. 
Caesar jumped on a course and it changed his whole perspective. For you, it might be getting a new job. It might be starting a side business. It might be taking up a course, going on a trip, who knows. But once you step out of the small game and open yourself up to the big wide world, you start asking the big questions. Once you look at the big picture, things can come into line. And I'm so glad that Caesar did because he now helps numerous other project managers succeed. It's not just about his world, but everyone else he connects with too. And I'm ever so proud of what he's done and what an amazing addition to the success mistake. Like I said before, Hans Caesar is now at the time of recording this, just starting his Kickstarter campaign. So be sure to head over to bit.ly forward slash purple coffee 22 and check out his link. If you can support, if you think it's gonna be a value, please do. Otherwise, just share a tweet or a Facebook like. And while they're on the Bitly page, be sure to check out Caesar's other sites and social media, and be sure to also subscribe to the Purple Coffee Podcast. If you'd like to watch with your old peepers, then the Vimeo channel is for you. Be sure to follow it. But if you like listening, maybe on your phone on the way to the office, then it's the iTunes channel for you. Subscribe, that button and the Vimeo one is on the page, as well as an email subscription. If you click that and give me your email, I will send you episodes of the Verbal Coffee Podcast before everyone else. And that's it, another session at an end. I'm so glad to have you here. What a joy you are. So until next time, have a great one.